All right, digital photography. I'm so excited to get this lesson out to you because we're moving away from our foundation's work and we're moving into a different theme, which I think is exciting. So people is going to be our next theme and that's the subject matter that we're talking about. But I don't want you to ignore the fact that you've built some skills in your foundation's theme that you really need to use. Every time you take a photograph, you should be thinking about composition. How are you arranging things in your viewfinder to make your image new and fresh and solid? How is the lighting that you're working with? The lighting that you're given naturally and then how do you set your exposure settings on your camera so that you're really taking the best use of that light and the best approach when it comes to uh, aperture, ISO, shutter speed. So think about all of those things as you take pictures of of people and like I said I'm excited to move into a new theme you guys are ready to roll and it's gonna be great so uh, for some reason my computer makes me go down and go the long way to get to the next slide but there's two artists that I want to share with you um, the first one is Platon that's this guy on the right he's Greek He's a photographer. Um, the reason why I put this um, Netflix screen up too is because um, that's how I got to learn about Platon. The first season of Abstract, and there's two seasons now, there's an episode on Platon and his photography. Uh, I love that series. If you haven't watched any of them, each episode highlights and tells the story of uh, somebody who's really made it big in a creative career and um, they're special. I think each person that they've highlighted are really special creative people. So check it out. And uh, Platon's episode, I would really encourage you to watch it if you can and watch for what he has as a photographer in addition to his technical skill level. He's got something really special in the process that he uses to photograph uh, his subjects and, and he has photographed just about every famous person you can imagine, both like pop culture and politically, all kinds of people. Um, and so look for his, his process and what he does uh, when he's taking photos that is unique and special to him and that really yields some amazing results because he, he uses um, his skills as a human uh, not just as a photographer. So check that out. I, like I said, I really encourage you to watch it. Um, another episode that's really solid is, uh, Tinker Hatfield's episode. It's in season one as well. Uh, he's a Nike designer, um, designed a bunch of the Jordans and I really love that episode. I've watched it several times because I usually share those with my students. A totally different photographer but he also photog photographs people. Gregory Crudson, this is an ad for his Brief Encounters uh, film. It's a documentary that came out a few years ago about uh, how he works because how he works as a photographer is so unique and it just yields some pretty cool, surreal, impactful images. Totally different process than Platon's. Uh, I'm going to show you the trailer for this film because I think it captures his process and how unique it is. But uh, lighting is big um, and his planning composition is, is, is you'll see evidence of that too. But um, check out the trailer. I think it'll really show you how he works and how it's, it's uh, unique. Pass this goofy little intro. Making a feature is 24 frames a second. Making a Gregor Kruse photograph is one frame a second, and it's more powerful than most features I've seen. Try sitting right more on the curb a little bit. The car could actually go back like another foot. Just move the phone a couple inches towards him. Maybe too much. Like that. My pictures are about a search for a moment, a perfect moment. Look how beautiful that is. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Something always necessarily goes wrong. Can we have quiet, please? I don't think there was ever a time where I didn't wake up absolutely feeling sick to my stomach. Position and hold. Gregory takes great pains to create these fantastical worlds that are seamlessly 
real. There has always been, while I was making the photographs, this sort of blurring of reality and fiction. Using actual places. That's the abyss right there. Actual inhabitants of the towns. Hey, it's Gregory. To try to draw out something psychological. It's amazing. Her expression's incredible. Look at that sky. That's the best sky we've ever had. To me, the most powerful moment in the whole process is when everything comes together. And for that instance, my life makes sense. All right, so two totally different photographers, different styles, different outcomes. Uh, and I'd love you for you to look at both of them and kind of compare and contrast and think about what your opinions are. Some people don't like Gregory's work because it's a little weird. Uh, and I'd like you to look at Platon's work closer and form opinions about what you think. Uh, and also, this makes me think about the fact that this people theme is really two-sided. Like you're taking pictures of people, but the thing that really makes your pictures unique is, is what you bring to the table as a person. So I would say the person behind the camera is, is the most important because that's the person that's driving the creativity and the ideas and the use of materials. And then obviously the model um, and the subject matter is important too, but the photographer brings uh, everything conceptually. So I think that's, that's at the heart of it. So yes, you're taking pictures of people, but you as a person and how you drive those photos, I think is, is the most critical thing. So let's talk about what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to use some creative hacks. I love that this lesson really lends itself to being at home. And we would do this if we were at school, at school or if you were at home, but being at home is perfect for this because I'm going to ask you to find everyday objects around your house and use them creatively to take some portraits of people. And the people could that you take portraits of, it could be you and you're kind of the creative director and you have somebody else behind the camera executing your idea if you want to take pictures of yourself or if you want to use a model and someone else, um, a family member or friend, then uh, you could do that. But here's a, a video that I came across about a year ago and it has a lot of examples of using things that you can have around your house uh, creatively. So check this out.
All right, so that is um, what I've got for you for just some ideas. And um, I have a lot of other creative hacks in the foundations folder that's talked, that's called um, creative photos. I'll, I'll leave some notes for that on the assignment. Um, so this is another video um, and I'm gonna put this in your assignment for you to watch. Uh, but you can see these people actually did exactly what you're going to do. Let me go back. I won't play the whole thing because it's 11 yeah, minutes. The fuck is going on with <laughs> but these people uh, did exactly what you're being asked to do. They went around their house and they found five different things uh, that they could use to photograph with. And then they went out and, and took some shots. So I'm going to leave this link for you in your assignment. And um, I'm gonna have you watch it uh, when you get to that when you get to that spot. But he, I like this um, shot at the beginning. You can see that he's just using like a piece of uh, shelving from maybe a grill or an oven, and then he's got this shoelace and he's laced it through. So again, the idea that comes from the photographer is what's gonna make this great. It's not that he has some you know something fancy. He's just trying things and using creative ideas that are coming from his own head. So, so you all have that ability and I'm excited to see what you come up with. Okay. So we're going to photograph two sides of this. I want you to document what you do. So that's what this is up here. It's just like an embroidery hoop and then some string quickly uh, wrapped around it. And then she photographed through it to get this kind of uh, effect in her portrait. So when you're taking your pictures, don't forget to actually document what you did as well. And you, you might need some help um, doing that. Or you could do something just like this if you're working by yourself uh, and just document what your setup is and what the materials that you're using are. And then I want to see what is your final artwork. I, I consider these portraits artwork for sure. So you'll submit both your final portraits this and also this. What 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 did it look like when you were um, setting up your work? All right, so let's talk about uh, the name of the game or the requirements. Find five objects around your house, and you can be the subject matter if you want the portraits to be of you, or you can find a model, someone else. Using each of the objects, I want you to come up with five or more uh, just creative ways. Uh, to make a beautiful creative image that's interesting, okay? Uh, and then like I just said, photograph your setup as well. I want to see what did it look like when you were taking those pictures. I'm super curious to see what you come up with and how you used what you found. And I'm also curious uh, what you're going to find and what you're going to use. It could be anything. Just look around and, and look. Could I shoot through that thing? Could I um, flash my light off of it? Could I bounce um, the image off of it? You saw people doing that with mirrors and glass. Um, and then upload your images to a new Flickr album. So you're going to upload your images and then make a new album. You can call it the people theme or you can call it portraits. And really, if you're thinking about the bare minimum, if you have two images, so you have the final portrait and then you have the one in process, times five different objects, that's 10 images. And honestly, you guys, that's like, that's like I said, the bare minimum. So I would expect that you would have more than that to show your work and to show that you were exploring, but it seems like people always wanna know what what's the bare minimum. This is uh, an online resource that is free if you wanna do some editing. 
Photopea is something you can check out. I've been hearing really good things about it in the uh, photography teacher communities on social media. So give it a try. The interface looks a lot like um, Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, but you don't have it at home, this could be something you try. The reason why I'm offering this now is because you saw a lot of those images were edited too. So if you want to do some editing and make your portraits, um, different by either adding a different background or um, anything, change your lighting, whatever. Give this a shot. I think it, it's a good resource for you. And yes, um, if you want to do some photo editing here and get um, into that post-production kind of stuff, I think that this is the perfect opportunity to do that. You can do the same process, the same project, but then in the end, really alter it to make it phenomenal in Photopea or if you have Photoshop that would be amazing too uh, or if there's something else that you like to use I know some people have uh, played with GIMP I think this Photopea is is newer and maybe uh, better than GIMP but I haven't used it myself a lot yet but I thought I'd toss it out there for you in case in case you're looking for something like that all right I hope that makes sense Go through the folder and go through each step because I have that one other video that I want you to watch and I'll throw some other resources in there for you. And um, I'm excited to see what you do this week, taking pictures of people. Keep in touch with me. Don't forget from 12 to 1, um, I'm on Zoom. If you have any questions or want to stop in and say hi or anything, I'm uh, there every day waiting for you. And uh, email, I'm trying to keep really current on that too. So that's another way to reach out to me quickly. All right, guys, super excited to see what you do with this. And I, of course, miss you all.